Chapter 27 That same afternoon when the daylight had nearly gone and the rain had turned to fine mist, the legion free corpse rode into Arbilon. The people of the city, who saw them pass, paused in the middle of their endeavours and turned to one another with guarded whispers. From high atop the tree lanes to the forest roadways below, hushed voices spoke as one. There was no mistaking the free corpse. Ando Elisadel was still closeted in the manor house study with his father and Alanon, kept there, oddly enough, at the George's insistence that, that he familiarise himself with the Westland maps of the Sarandanan and propose defensive plans when Gael brought word of their arrival. My lord, a cavalry commander of the Border Legion has ridden in from Callaghan, the young aide announced, appearing abruptly at the study door. Our patrols picked them up an hour east of the city and escorted them in. They should be here in a few minutes. The Legion! A broad smile spread across the old king's weary face. I hadn't dared to hope. What command, Gael? How many are they? No word, my lord. A messenger from the patrol brought the news, but there were no details. No matter. Eventai was on his feet and moving towards the door. Any help is welcome, whoever... Elvin King, Elanon's voice brought Anders' father about sharply. We have important work to do here, work that should not be interrupted. Perhaps your son might go in your place, if only to give greeting to the bordermen. Anders stared at Elanon in surprise and turned eagerly to his father. The king hesitated, then seeing the look in his son's eyes, he nodded. Very well, Lander. Extend my compliments to the Legion Commander and advise him that I will meet with him personally later this evening. See that quarters are provided. Pleased with having been given a responsibility of some importance for a change, Ander hurried from the manor house, an escort of Elven hunters in tow. The surprise he had experienced at Elanon's unexpected suggestion turned quickly to curiosity. It occurred to him that this was not the first time that Elanon had gone out of his way to include him when the Druid need not have done so. There was that first meeting when he had told Eventine of Amberley and the blood fire. There was his admonition to Ander upon leaving for Paranor to assume responsibility for his father's protection. There was that sense of alliance that had brought him to his feet in the High Council to stand with Amberley when no one else would do so. There was this afternoon's meeting when Elanon had given the outcry staff to his father. Arian should have been present for these meetings, not he. Why was Arian never there? He had just passed through the gates, fronting the manor house grounds, still pondering the matter when the foremost ranks of the border cavalry crested the roadway leading in, and the entire command wound slowly into view. And a slowed, frowning. He recognised these riders, long grey cloaks, bordered in crimson billowed from their shoulders, and wide-brimmed hats with a single crimson feather sat crocked upon their heads. Long bows and broadswords jutted from their saddle harnesses and short swords were strapped across their backs. Each rider held a lance from which fluttered a small crimson and grey pennant, and the horses wore light armour of leather with metal fastenings, escorted by the handful of elven hunters who had picked them up while on patrol east of the city. They rode through the rain-soaked streets of Arbilon in their precise, measured lines and glanced neither left nor right at the crowds who gathered to stare after them. The free corpse, Ander murmured to himself. They have sent us the free corpse. There were few who had not heard of the free corpse, the most famous and the most controversial command ever attached to the border legion of Callaghan. It drew its name from the promise it gave to those who joined its ranks that its soldiers might leave behind without fear of question or need for explanation. All that had come before in their lives, for most, there was much to be left. They came from different lands, different histories and different lives, but they came for similar reasons. There were thieves among them, killers and cheats, soldiers broken from other armies, men of low blood and high, men with honour and men without, some searching, some fleeing, some drifting but all seeking to escape 
what they were, to forget what they had been and to start anew. The Free Corps gave them that chance. No soldier of the Free Corps was ever asked about his past. His life began with the day he joined. What had come before was finished. Only the present mattered. What a man might make of himself for the time that he served. For most, that time was short. The Free Corps was a Legion shock unit. As such, it was considered expendable. Its soldiers were the first into battle and the first to die. In every engagement fought since the inception of the Corp some 30 years earlier, its casualty rate had been the highest. While the past had been left behind by the soldiers of the Free Corps, the future was an even more uncertain prospect. Still, it was a fair exchange, most thought. After all, there was a price for everything, and this price was not so unreasonable. If anything, it was a source of pride for the soldiers who paid it. It gave them a sense of importance, an identity that set them apart from any other fighting men in the four lands. It was a tradition of the Free Corps that its soldiers should die in battle. It was not important to the men of the Corps that they should die. Death was the reality of their existence, and they viewed it as an old acquaintance with whom they had brushed soldiers on more than one occasion. No, it was not important that they should die. It was important only that they should die well. They had proven often enough before and anew. Now it appeared that they had been sent to Arbalon to prove it once again. The Legion command drew to a halt before the Iron Gates, and a tall grey cloaked rider in the forefront dismounted. Catching sight of Vander, he passed the reins of his horse to another and strode forward. On reaching the Elven Prince and his guard, he removed the wide brim hat he wore and inclined his head slightly. I am Steve Jans, commander of the Legion Free Corps. For an instant, Ander did not respond. So startled was he by the other's appearance. Steve Jans was a big man, seeming to tower over Ander. His weathered, yet still youthful face was crisscrossed with dozens of scars, some of which ran through the light red beard that shaded his jaw, leaving streaks of white. A tangle of rust-covered hair fell to his shoulders, braided and tied. Part of one ear was missing and a single gold ring dangled from the other. Hazel eyes fixed on the elven prince so hard that they seemed chiseled from stone. Ander found himself staring and quickly recovered. Uh, I am Andery Lesserdale. Eventine is my father. He extended his hand in greeting. Steve Jans' grip was iron hard. The brown hands calloused and knotted. Ander broke the handshake quickly and glanced down the long lines of grey riders, searching in vain for other units of the Legion. The king has asked me to extend his compliments and to see that you are quartered. How soon can we expect the other commands? A faint smile crossed the big man's scarred visage. There are no other commands, my lord. Only the soldiers of the Free Corps. Only the... Ander hesitated in confusion. How many of you are there, Commander? Six hundred. Six hundred? And it failed to hide its dismay. But what of the Border Legion? How soon will it, will, will it be sent? Steve Jans paused. My Lord, I believe that I should be direct with you. The Legion may not be sent at all. The Council of the Cities has not yet made a decision. Like most councils, It finds it easier to talk about making a decision than to make it. Your ambassador spoke well, I am told, but there are many voices of caution on the council, some of opposition. The king defers to the council. The council looks south. The federation is a threat that the council can see. Your dreams are little more than a Westland myth. A myth? Ander was appalled. You are fortunate to have even the free corpse, the big man continued calmly. You would not have that if it were not for the Council's need to soothe its collective conscience. A token force, at least, must be sent to the aid of the Elven allies, they argued. The Free Corps was a logical choice, just as it always is. Whenever there is an obvious sacrifice to be made, it was a simple statement of fact made without rancor or bitterness. The big man's eyes stayed flat and expressionless, and a flush. 
Uh, I would not have thought that the men of Callahan would be so stupid, he snapped, a sense of anger rushing through him. See, Jan studied him a moment, as if measuring him. I understand that when Callahan was under attack from the armies of the Warlock Lord, the Borderlands sent a request to the Elves for assistance. But Eventime was made prisoner by the Dark Lord, and in his absence, the High Council of the Elves found itself unable to act. He paused. It is much the same with Callahan now. The Borderlands have no leader. They have no leader since Balinor. And I eyed the other critically, his anger subsiding. You are an outspoken man, Commander. I am an honest man, my lord. It helps me to see things more clearly. What you have told me might not sit so well with some in Callahan. The borderman shrugged. Perhaps that is why I am here. And a smiled slowly. He likes Steve Jans. Even without knowing any more about him than he did at this moment. Commander, I did not mean to seem angry. It has nothing to do with you. Please understand that. In the free courts is most welcome. Now let me see to your quarters. Stejan shook his head. No quarters are necessary. I sleep with my soldiers. Mo my lord. The elven army marches in the morning, I am told. Ander nodded. Then the free corps will march as well. We need only rest tonight. Please tell this to the king. I will tell him, Ander promised. The legion commander saluted, then turned and walked back to his horse. Remounting, he nodded briefly to the riders of the Elven Patrol who escorted his command, and the long grey column swung left once more down the muddied road. Ander stared after him with mingled admiration and disbelief. Six hundred men! Thinking of the thousands of demons that would come against him, he found himself wondering what possible difference 600 Southlanders would make. <laughs>